Additionally, the specific task performed during the 24 hour sampling period were correlated Hi, on the daily activity the logs to identify noise hazardous processes and associated discomforts among university students, a pilot study. Randomly selected sailors across military ratings, including those who work on the flight deck, are members of aviation squadrons and who well work in noise hazardous locations below deck, were fitted with state-of-the-art dosimeters. Such as gender, the participants wore the dosimeters for a 24-hour period with periodic checks of the equipment by the research team while in use. That could reduce the, the dosimeters were then removed and data was uploaded from each unit. Make recommendations Primary, to secondary, and denied. tertiary noise we sources to were mapped with the use of noise dosimeter data surveys and paired with dosimeter data to identify sources of exposure. Several articles Traditional occupational safety and health assessments of noise hazards uses. typically consist of noise dosimetry and the resulting 8-hour time-weighted average. After three survey. trips to aircraft carriers to collect over 100 samples of 24-hour measurements, our results suggest that using the percent dose is a more valid and reliable method of characterizing noise exposure and identifying personnel that need to be entered in a hearing conservation program. In addition, Thank you for taking the time to view this video. Please stop by our poster session in Orlando to find out more information about our study. Weekly basis. This resulted in all of the participants being university students. Well, According to this survey, 21 year olds feel like a heavy research, exact test. Because I wanted to find a it should be no surprise that those between the ages of 18 to 23 carry the heaviest bags overall. This is a typical age range for undergraduate students. Due to the higher volume of classes, undergraduate students they can prefer I believe to graduate this will carry students. over into industrial Undergraduates training. are typically required Today, to carry more textbooks best for when daily instruction classes in their than their graduate counterparts. Academic institutions everywhere have adapted also to the needs of their students. Differ greatly from the question now in the sense is whether companies will adapt to the same needs of their future workers. Prompting a commuting student to carry Section all one the books details in the demographics of the long. Lancaster County Graduate Industrial Safety Council. Are almost always at night. Fifty percent of the participants to do represent companies with fifty to two hundred Therefore, employees. fewer materials are required Act for each day of the class. Aside from industry, that, older with students another forty two point nine percent coming from construction based companies generally have lighter bags. Eighty two point three percent of employees are over the age of thirty four and thus represented companies. Finally, we can see that 68.8% of companies tend to carry surveyed utilize lecture-based techniques. Women tend to carry While this method may be adequate for the current workforce, it will not be acceptable for younger generations moving up it who are computer-dependent. It is implied that there may be a direct relationship between BMI and discomfort The survey asked respondents who utilized a five-point Likert scale this can be to evaluate to the effectiveness of their training efforts based on safety knowledge. BMI. This is of course not true for all cases, safety and health outcomes. as evidenced by the sharp decline I evaluated in the four main training participants classified as Highlighted in yellow, we can see that hands-on demonstrations were deemed to be the most effective method in, in the industry. While 68.8% of participants Those utilized lecture-based approaches well as their primary training method, they actually ranked the effectiveness of this approach three out of four. Females are 1.7 times more likely to measure the current needs of computer-based approaches in the industry. I asked participants to evaluate in range and muscle mass methods. between the two genders. 58.8% of the participants detailed that Another there was a basic need a or greater for this method in which men feel compelled to admit their discomfort far less than women, slide proved to us that there is a majority the need for computer-based approaches. By females participants is 13 are still unsure of how the this approach will be best implemented in the industry. By male is 14 pounds as mentioned in our previous slide. Finally, in addition, let's review there is the not a significant takeaways from Section 3. In the average weight of the backpack in relation to average direct investment today as in new technologies data. would directly benefit their overall safety efforts. The majority of people who carry a backpack on a weekly believe their employees will most likely do so through so virtual simulation training. 58.8% believe the computer-based method will be the primary the training of method of in the next 10 to 20 years. 12.5% believe their current safety culture would be improved as the number of complaints invested in computer-based methods as back the in 2000. To increase. Ultimately, this is due to the very the research study has backpacks. shown computer-based approach to training will be a key issue in years to come. Like any emerging issue, forward-thinking companies that invest in this method now will find themselves at a competitive Overall, advantage later on. Generation Y will three. demand the on use of computers in their training and their job tasks. Year. I believe the companies that best incorporate this reality, not only in their safety culture, but their corporate identity will be the leaders of the future.
Regardless of the position, I'd like to thank the American the Society of Safety Engineers as well as the Foundation in their for this opportunity to present my research the as well as the other countless resources they provide to develop the future no safety leaders of tomorrow. I appreciate the, the Lancaster I County Industrial the Safety Council the lower back pain for their willingness to participate the in this research the study. And the most Thank you to Dr. Jack Agutu, who is my research back. advisor for this entire project. And I'd also like to thank Dr. Paul Speck for his Believe commitment and devotion to not only myself, but to everyone that he meets. This indicates that a moment arm reduction will result in a significantly lower chance of pain and thus lower the chance of development. Hi, my name is Taylor Burton from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, and the project that we are currently working on is an air combat training paradigm with a name called Live Virtual Range Structure Training, or DLRT, is not a learning method, but is high enough to be a decent one. LVC combines a live pilot up in the air with a pilot on the ground in a simulator as well as a computer-generated track, all in one training paradigm. More specifically, we are focused on hazard assessment and mitigation for LVC. Currently, there are procedures, training levels, standards, and naval aviation culture together that make up the current safety system. Implementation of LVC will likely require modifications to that safety system. Based upon the results, Twenty potential hazards were identified in accordance with the operational risk management, risk management process. In addition to risk ORM is a systematic cyclical process individuals that consists should carry of five steps. And use Thus far, we have completed judgment the first two steps of the round of this repeatable process. On a daily basis. The identification of a hazards and hazard assessment, in terms of safety and severity and probability scales. Will result in overall in the future, less risk decisions time. will need to be made. Finally, individuals will be implemented and supervision, including hazard monitoring and feedback systems. Identified hazards were assessed the given the severity and probability scales of the ORM. And will decrease the Two researchers rated severity and probability for each hazard, and their reconciled ratings Thank were plotted on the risk assessment matrix shown here questions. to obtain a risk assessment code. Efforts must be made to mitigate the 20 identified potential hazards, which fall into seven overall categories.